As we keep this season of Advent, we celebrate the way in which God kept his promises to his ancient people in the coming of Jesus. And we look ahead to the time when God will fulfill his whole purpose when Jesus comes again. Isaiah 55, verses 6 to 13. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake their way and the unrighteous their thoughts. Let them return to the Lord that he may have mercy on them and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven, and do not return there until they have watered the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose and succeed in the thing for which I sent it. For you shall go out in joy and be led back in peace. The mountains and the hills before you shall burst into song and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorn shall come up the cypress. Instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle and it shall be to the Lord for a memorial, for an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. That is the ending of the great central section of the book of Isaiah, chapters 40 to 55, which is so much part of the Advent readings in traditional Christian liturgies that we often think of it just in those terms, but actually it is the quintessence of so much of the Old Testament. And how does this passage in Isaiah work? It works by the promise that God is going to come back, the promise that God, God is going to come back to restore not only Israel but the whole creation, the promise that God will do that through this strange figure of the servant who suffers and dies, but the promise of restoration, the promise of the word that will come and do God's will. And when I see the way that Isaiah 40 to 55 works, I see in chapter 40, all flesh is like grass and it's, it's glory like the flower of the field. It withers and fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. And there's a line right across to the passage I just read. So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It won't fail. It will do exactly what I wanted it to do. And from there we come to the all-time famous passage in John chapter 1, a passage read again and again in Christmas services. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. All things were made through him. I think of Psalm 33, by the word of the Lord were the heavens made, and all the host of them by the breath of his mouth. But then the word became flesh and dwelt in our midst. The word became flesh and pitched his tent in our midst. The word became flesh and became the tabernacle, as in Exodus, the place where God came to dwell. And we gazed upon his glory. That's what happens in the ultimate temple. So this promise of the word which goes out to do God's work is, in technical language, a Christological promise, a Jesus-shaped promise, a promise we retrieve when we read John chapter 1, because there the word means that God speaks and stuff happens, and then God's living breath becomes a living being, the human being Jesus of Nazareth. The word became flesh and pitched his tent, tabernacled in our midst. And once we see that, we can relate it to the whole of that passage in Isaiah 55, because Christmas, the coming of the word as flesh into our midst, isn't just about this well-known story about Bethlehem and the birth and Joseph and Mary and all the rest of it. It's right that we celebrate that and tell the story again and again, but we should have somewhere in our minds, not too far away, the fact that this intimate, very human scene then stretches out and says to the whole world, this is the time for everyone. Let the wicked forsake their way and the unrighteous their thoughts. Let them return to the Lord. This is where it all counts because God is remaking the whole of creation. 
And Isaiah 40 to 55, this great Advent passage, reaches its climax with the work of the servant in Isaiah 53, uh, which is, it seems, how in fact the glory of the Lord is revealed, returning to Zion from 52. That results, as we see in chapter 54, with the renewal of the covenant, as we see spelt out throughout the whole New Testament. And that results in chapter 55 in the renewal of creation itself. Instead of the briar shall come up the, the myrtle. Instead of the thorn shall come up the cypress. Because God, through his word, is sowing his world again with good seed. Think of Jesus telling those parables of the seed and the sower. There's so much here in this chapter which resonates out into the New Testament. So as we celebrate the coming of the word into our midst, the word become flesh, let's embrace this Christmas time, that promise that one day God will renew the whole creation until the earth is full of the knowledge and the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. And so we pray, Almighty Father, as you spoke your living word in creation, as you gave your living word to become Jesus, to become our savior, to launch your new creation, so give to us this Christmas time and always the faith that your word is powerful and that whatever is going on in our lives, your word will do its work to refresh, renew and restore, to make us the people that you want us to be now and in the age to come. Amen. We know many of you have enjoyed our weekly devotional series. May I ask that you consider making a donation to help this teaching ministry continue in 2024. You can visit the links in the description below to make your gift of any amount during this Advent season. Thank you for your support.